Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art, and today is Friday, November 23rd. I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving yesterday. We did. We had the kids over and the grandchildren and cooked turkeys and pecan pies and all that good stuff. It was very cold here. Uh, God, it was 12 degrees when I got up yesterday, and the wind was howling off the water at about 40 miles an hour, so it was a little chilly. At any rate, here we are, and we'll take a look at uh, last week's eBay auction results and see how things did. Take a look ahead at uh, eBay and Catawiki and see how things are going over there. It's going pretty well. All right, one thing I did want to mention that this past week on Monday, in case you missed it, a lot of you have seen it, we did a, a preview of the upcoming sales in Hong Kong. Uh, the Christie's has uh, got uh, some amazing catalogs coming up uh, with this 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 one here with mul it's called multifarious colors three incredible uh, Chin Lung and uh, Yong Shen uh, examples uh, including this extremely rare blue handled deer flask and uh, we can mosey over here they've got a set of month cups coming up uh, that are quite exceptional with uh, enormous estimates, uh, uh, I expect, but I think, I think they'll probably get there. They're very rare, and we talk about those a bit. And then, of course, there's this, the famous Ruware Bowl that was discovered a few years ago, uh, 2015, in Japan uh, during the preparation for an exhibition. And uh, somebody just walked in with this and said, hey, what do you think of this? And uh, so now there's one more uh, known example to the Ruware list. We're still under 100 in the entire world, and most of them are in museums uh, at this point. There's a few in private collections, but this is going to be a real test of the market. We'll see how it does. There's also an exceptional Canuta Green uh, vase coming up. Uh, um, right here uh, from, I think maybe, it looks like it's coming out of the, it's also coming from a Japanese collection. So we'll see how they all do, all right? But it'll be, it's an interesting uh, auction, uh, series of auctions, and I hope you check out the video. It was a very interesting uh, thing to go through and uh, look at everything and talk about. It was fun, a lot of fun, all right? And uh, now on to uh, eBay last week. Uh, they had some good results. One of the things that they had was this, this really elegant, beautifully done uh, uh, blue and white uh, uh, pot from uh, Ben Krong uh, region, 18th century uh, Thai thing, uh, did really well. It brought $2,247. Most of the rare, blue, blue examples of these are pretty rare. Um, this one uh, had a wonderful top on it with a sort of a stupa finial uh, up, up here uh, with these double rings under it. It was just a, a lovely example. Uh, most most Ben Krong pieces you see are actually done in uh, enamels. So this made it quite unusual, very interesting piece. I, I don't think that was uh, too much money for it at all. I thought it was quite uh, quite reasonable given what it is. This, though, was a pretty good buy for the week. This very nice 18th century molded, this is from the same seller, very nice molded example of, of, of a vase, uh, probably uh, Kangxi or, or just a little bit after it. He dated it as circa 1700. Um, you'd have to look at it. There's some shipwreck examples that do look a lot like this. This went for almost nothing, $117. As I recall, I think it had a little bit of a repair or something old repaired trip on the rim um, with a hairline but but for 117 bucks that was a bargain all right that was a very very reasonable buy if you can live with pieces that aren't absolutely perfect all the time okay and then we're going to slip over to uh, here was that garniture set uh, it's sort of inspired by Cornelius Pronk uh, this was our friend Hans over in uh, the Netherlands had it and it did pretty well it brought a thousand thirty four dollars it would have brought more but I think the fritting on the on the corners and the edges which is very typical in these uh, obviously held it back all right, but this was a, a nice set. Uh, if you're not going to be around shelling out maybe eight or ten thousand dollars for a set of these, this was a good buy. This was a wise thing to purchase. All right, and then onto this, another pronk influenced dish with uh, green enamels and famille rose. A very, very pretty plate. I, I thought this was quite nice. And uh, it went for $1,185, which I think was a, p a perfectly reasonable price. These can bring more than that. They can bring two or 3,000 at times, but this was, this was a, a small one. It was only nine inches. The bigger ones, the ones that are 12, 14 inches, they, they, they double in price, all right? And then onto this, this was that uh, nice looking catagon. It had a small hairline in the spout right here, as you can see, but a, a pretty unusual one because it had uh, uh, no, no other decoration on it other than blue and it had a splash of iron red on the top 
right there, okay? And you can see where some of it, hap what happens is, is that the copper oxide in, in, the, in, the, in the red, um, when it's fired, sometimes it misfires a little bit and it turns this sort of pleasant green, light celadon color. But this was an old one, it had a nice looking foot on it, lots of grunge and crud under there. And uh, it, d it did all right, it brought $548, all right? Um, we've seen these sell for less. We've seen them sell for more. I think I think we had one on here a few months ago. It was very similar to this, and I think it went for about seven hundred, eight, seven fifty, somewhere around there. And this was one of the most interesting little bowls that came up uh, during the week. This 18th century inscribed uh, punch bowl. Here's a, s a side view of it. Here's the top of it. Okay. Uh, some people speculated it might be Kung Shi period. I'm not certain of that, but it had nice calligraphy on it and. Uh, very well done, and uh, it did quite well. It brought $4,677. All right, this is a seller that's been getting a lot more Chinese stuff lately. Uh, this bowl also had no restoration or repairs or hairlines or anything else, okay? Um, it had been touched up apparently with some paint at some point on some of the enamels according to the condition report. Uh, a the seller's name is Amy, spelled with many M's, 787. And lately she's been coming up, or he's been coming up, or whoever a a Amy is, um, with, with some decent Chinese things, and this was one of them. All right, and then on to this, they had this Bodhisattva figure, this, this standing figure, inlaid, uh, it looks like it's inlaid with silver, or, or incised anyway, it's incised. Uh, nice looking figure. Uh, I kind of thought this might have been Japanese. It's a Bodhama, and uh, they said it was Chinese. Uh, it looked it looked it looked almost Japanese to me, but it's uh, these these could be very hard to uh, pinpoint. In any event, somebody figured out what it was, and it went for three thousand and thirty dollars. All right, and then on to this. This was that nice Femi June f with Famille Rose decorated uh, slab constructed vase. Uh, I thought this was just a very pretty vase. This wasn't especially old. It was obviously a 19th century example, uh, but I just thought it had a little chip out of it there. And the seller did a great job with the photography on this, but this was a very attractive, very pretty vase. Something nice to own in the winter <laughs> when you're covered with ice and snow. It's nice to have some bright, cheerful colors. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $710, but I thought this was a, just a nice, nice looking, looking pot. All right. And then onto this, the, the Grisaille decorated teapot. Uh, a pretty nice looking teapot. And Grisaille decorated wares uh, are highly collected. There's a whole class of peop, uh, collectors for, for Grisaille work. And uh, this one did pretty well. It was sort of brought in the mid range. Sometimes they bring four or 500, sometimes they bring a little under, you know, down around three. This one went for $398. This was a good looking uh, pot. This was sold by our friends over in the Netherlands at the Ceramics and Collectibles, all right? We feature them. They have a lot of Buy It Now stuff. If you check our Buy It Now page, uh, I think they've got over 2,000 items on there. They're two guys, they're good sellers, and uh, they work really hard, and uh, they sell nice things. They get the real stuff, all right? And on to this, this bronze uh, pagoda uh, uh, affair with the bells on it and so forth. You see these in Japanese and you see them on occasion in Chinese. And this one was put up as a Chinese example and uh, it did pretty well. It's a late piece. This is a late 19th century piece, judging by the casting. Um, they said it's chi it has a chin lung mark on it, but I couldn't see it in the photos anywhere. But regardless, it went for $1,684. But this was big. This was a pretty tall item. Uh, I forget what the exact height of it was. It was like, uh, yeah, 37 centimeters. So it was about 16, 17 inches tall. Good size bronze, all right? Very handsome. You can electrify these, by the way. I got my sister a pair of Japanese ones that weren't too dissimilar years ago, and we very carefully ran clear wires up them and used them as lanterns, and uh, she put it in her dining room. It looked, it looked good, it looked nice, all right? And, uh, and then on to this. Now, this bowl sold a few weeks ago, as I recall, and it did, I don't know, $500 something, and apparently the bidder didn't pay his bill, all right? This is a nice 18th century bowl. Um, could even possibly be uh, early early 18th century. Good looking thing. Looks like it had some uh, some crackles or something in the in the pot here. But the the glaze on this I loved. I loved the glaze on this a few weeks ago. I still like it. And uh, if you did too, you might get it for a better price this time around. At any rate, it's up. It's up to forty six dollars. And uh, we'll see how it does. I hope I hope uh, somebody this time around pays for it. 
All right, and I wanted to hop over here to a couple things that were on Catawiki that slipped through that went very reasonably. One of them was this. This was a nice 18th century Chinlung bowl, all right, and it measured, uh, it wasn't terribly big. It was about, uh, about six inches or so in diameter, and it went for just $250. That was a pretty good buy for that. That's a nice high quality bowl, lots of good deep red enamels in it. And uh, I think that was a wise purchase. And also somebody, if, you, if you're a cup collector, I noticed that Katowicki has been getting a lot of nice, really fine small cups. If you, if, you, if you have a collection of cups around your house that you've been working on, this was a nice one. This was a good old cup slat, uh, with flattened sides, a uh, nice looking wine cup. There they are, all right. Had a tiny, tiny, it looks like either a blister or a tiny bit of the glaze got nicked off on the rim, which is not unusual. You have, as you know, if you collect cups, they usually have hairlines in them because they got used so much, all right? But this is a nice Kung Shi cup, and it went for $170, which I don't think was a bad purchase at all. And then there was the betel nut box. I put this on. We don't have a lot of stuff in this part of Asia, but, but this was a good-looking box, and I love the sort of oversized handles on it. Uh, and as you know, betel nut is a, a, a tradition. Uh, chew, chewing them, uh, chewing betel nut with lime pots down in the in the Philippines and Southern Asia. And this was a nice one. It brought three hundred and two dollars. Okay, there's a whole world of betel nut stuff out there. If you want to get into an interesting area, look into betel nut jars and lime pots and and all that. There's some they did some great stuff in it. All right, and uh, now we're going to hop over to. Uh, to here. This is the uh, upcoming page for this week. There's quite a few things in there. There's also there's a couple of very nice Celadons. There's a nice little snuff bottle, and uh, we'll take we're going to take a closer look here. All right, hold on. There we go. This is up. This is this is the stuff coming up this week on Catawiki. There's a lot of material on there. They've got four auctions going. One of the pieces I saw was this. This is a pretty interesting Rose Canton Famille Rose 19th century pot. Uh, the way the panels are done with Mandarin figures, but the rest of it doesn't look like uh, like the typical background decoration you see on Famille Rose. A bit different, okay? This is a mid-late 19th century one, but I think it's sort of interesting, and it was probably part of a garniture set once. All right, and these are just starting, so the bids are up to nothing. And this I like. This this is a nifty old uh, of of uh, it's a, of the Taoist immortal Li Ti Hui. Uh, this is a big piece, 41 centimeters tall, 19 uh, made around 1920. Uh, some of these were made a little before. He says 1925. It's probably just a guess. And uh, but the carving on this was really nice. All right, I happen I have I have one of these. It's actually in Zeton. It's a, tucked away in my house. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure where it is right now. I think it's in downstairs someplace. But at any rate, I love these old carvings. I love these old statues. I think they're underappreciated. This is a nice one. As you remember last week, there was that nice elephant with the boys on it that sold. It's brought about $600. This is a nice carving. Very attractive. Um, and it looks to be in quite good shape. And uh, it has no bids. It just this, this has just gone up in the last few days. Ends next week. We'll have it on the page. And there's also a very nice little interesting uh, Famille Rose uh, mid-18th century creamer uh, made probably for the export market, judging by it. And uh, there's a decent, perfectly decent late 19th century Chinese uh, uh, painting of a woman with children uh, playing instruments. Uh, it's just a really charming little uh, scroll. Uh, here's some of them that, that with drums and cymbals and flutes. And here they are. Okay, nicely done. It's a nice little thing. It's in a frame, and uh, it closes in a week. But we'll have it. We'll have it on the page on their page this week. And then there's this bronze. Now they dated this bronze as being 19th to 20th century. I, I have, my my gut says they're being a little overly cautious on the date. I think it's older than that. But uh, nice looking bronze, and I like the shape of it. This raised up body. It's it's, it's, it's much more vertical. Some a lot of these brush, you know, these uh, incense burners and pots can look rather compressed. This one doesn't at all. Um, and I like the surface on it. It looks like it's, it's been around for a while. And uh, we'll see how that does, all right? But I, 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 my, my, I, I think it's older than the, than the date they're giving it. All right, and uh, on to this. this uh, again, this, this is what some of these cups they have on there. This is a nice young Chen little cup that's on uh, Katawiki this coming week. And this nice two-handled pot. This is quite good. Uh, the, according to the condition report, the uh, lower section is absolutely perfect. There's a couple of minor flaking and flakes and nicks and stuff on the upper part. I think around here where the dressing is supposed to be, there's a little dressing rubbed off. 
but um, very good condition. And this is a nice size. It's, it's, it's 13 centimeters in diameter. It's a nice piece of porcelain. You might want to check that out. And then there was this. This is an interesting thing. Um, and uh, you all can go over and take a look at it. This will be on the newsletter this week. This is a big, and it looks like a transitional pot. Now, the seller has it up as being a, a, a 19th century a Qing. All right, but check this out pretty carefully, I think. Um, I like the, uh, here they showed a very good pictures of the bubble patterns. And I like the, the way they look. And I like the way the fish are drawn. And I like the way this neck is done with this slight inward curve and so forth. And uh, it may be 19th century. I haven't done a lot of looking at it yet. I just came across it a little while ago. But I would check this out. It's going to be in the newsletter. It's a pretty good looking pot. All right. And uh, slide over to here is this big, uh, big rouleau vase. Uh, this, is a, this is done like a Kang Shi one, sort of, with the panels and so forth. It's not. It's clearly a 19th century example. But it's well painted. Okay, this is a nicely painted big vase. It's 47 centimeters or uh, something like that tall. It's a nice tall vase. All right, but the decoration on it is quite well done. Um, it had been apparently at one stage of its life a lamp. There's a, there's a filled hole on the bottom and all that, but this is a good looking pot. And uh, it is, I'm gonna make sure I get the, right, the height right. Yeah, 46 and a half centimeters. So it's, a, it's, it's around 19, 20 inches tall. Good big vase, it's up to $800. It should double that by the end. But uh, very attractive, very attractive with the panels the way it was done. All right, and then this, our friend uh, Josh up at, uh, in New Hampshire, uh, Chamberlain Antiques, uh, had, has this nice Kang Shi uh, Femi Ver plate. He's doing sort of an end of the year sale. I think he's clearing out some stuff, but he always, he always has nice things to, you know, to this is this is not a clear, clear out item, clearly. Uh, it's got an old Yamanaka company label on it. If you're interested in provenance, this is something to look at, okay? Yamanaka handled some great stuff. Uh, back in the day before the federal government shut them down after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Uh, there was a 1917 law, you can't have a business in America if your company belongs to an enemy combatant. Well, sadly for the art world, we lost the Yamanaka company. It was liquidated. But they sold a lot of great material. They had probably one of the best research departments in the world for Asian art, including Japanese, Thai, all that stuff. They had stores everywhere. And this was something they retailed back in the day. Okay, so, but it's a beautifully done, beautifully composed plate. Really like it. And there's this, this, this Famille Rose uh, uh, vase of mid, mid 19th century or so with peacocks on it. But the enamels on this are really brilliant. Really nice enamels, uh, beautifully done. And uh, it's interesting because early, the video we did earlier this week, there's that big who form vase um, that's it's in that three catalog set I mentioned at the beginning. And it's considered to be particularly rare because it has blue handles. All right, blue handles on these vases, even in the 18th century and in the 19th century, are fairly rare. All right, and uh, this was a, a really lovely, lovely piece. There's some nice orange peel on there. We'll see how that does. It's, uh, what's it up to? $460. It's nowhere near its value. Uh, and it is, how tall is this thing? It's two feet tall, 24 inches tall. It's a good, good big vase. All right, and then over here, there's a couple of celadons this week that we came across that are on here. They're both Ming. Uh, this is one of them. Um, this is a nice celadon, high-footed celadon incense burner. There it is. Okay, he took a, it's always good when they take a picture outside in natural light. You get a much better sense of the color of the, of the celadon, especially celadon. This is a good, nice green on this. All right, it has an old line in the body, but it's a nice, it's a nice celadon, okay? And it's incised, as you can see, with these uh, floral elements. It's an early 16th century example. And uh, then over to this one, here's another uh, Long Quan Celadon. And uh, it looks like it might be pretty dirty on top of it. But this is a good old one right here, all right? And uh, here's a, they, they, they have a, there's a tag on here that says it's Sung. I don't think it's Sung. I think it's Ming. But um, these old tags often appear on things, okay? And then just as a heads up, um, you, uh, this will probably have closed by the time we go up, but this, uh, that wonderful uh, view of Macau fan that was up last week that I mentioned, I'll tell you what it brings when it closes if, 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 if anybody wants to know, but I, I'm curious. It's up to $1,283. It's got six hours to go. 
Um, and uh, if you get the, see this video before and you're interested, you might want to scoot over to the site and hit the link for it or go find it and uh, put a bid on it, okay? And uh, that's it for the week. It was sort of a little bit quiet this week. There's a lot of stuff coming up in this week's uh, newsletter. Um, we, we, I was surprised. Uh, a lot of good things. Um, our friend Scrap Dixon over in um, uh, France has got himself into a collection of nice Ming blue and white dishes. Uh, he's got maybe five or six of them are quite good. Uh, and there's some other things that popped up. So we found out there's a new seller we came across. I haven't seen them before. We have a bunch of things from them. All right. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do here on uh, YouTube. Come over to the Bitamount site and sign up. Give us a thumbs up here if you can. We'd appreciate it, always. Leave a comment, ask a question, and um, we'll be around next week. We're going to get a few things we're working on. And, uh, whoops, there's a page we're editing. And uh, see you all next time, and thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Have a great long weekend. All righty. Bye-bye.